Question 83.12. Questioner, then for a service to others oriented entity at this time meditation upon the nature of these little expected forms of slavery might be productive in polarization I would think. Am I correct? Answer, I am Ra. You are quite correct. Question 83.13. Questioner, I would say that a very high percentage of the laws and restrictions within what we call our legal system are of a nature of enslavement of which I just spoke. Would you agree with this? Answer, I am Ra. It is a necessary balance to the intention of law, which is to protect, that the result would encompass an equal distortion towards imprisonment. Therefore, we may say that your supposition is correct. This is not to denigrate those who, in green and blue ray energies, sought to free a peaceable people from the bonds of chaos but only to point out the inevitable consequences of codification of response which does not recognize the uniqueness of each and every situation within your experience. Question 83.14 Questioner, is the veil supposed to be what I would call semi-permeable? Answer, I am Ra. The veil is indeed so. Question 83.15. Questioner, what techniques and methods of penetration of the veil were planned and are there any others that have occurred other than those planned? Answer, I am Ra. There were none planned by the first great experiment. As all experiments, this rested upon the nakedness of hypothesis. The outcome was unknown. It was discovered, experientially and empirically, that there were as many ways to penetrate the veil as the imagination of mind, body, spirit complexes could provide. The desire of mind, body, spirit complexes to know that which was unknown drew to them the dreaming and the gradual opening to the seeker of all of the balancing mechanisms leading to adeptude and communication with teach learners which could pierce this veil. The various and manifested activities of the self were found to be productive in some degree of penetration of the veil. In general, we may say that by far the most vivid and even extravagant opportunities for the piercing of the veil are a result of the interaction of polarized entities. Question 83.16 Questioner, could you expand on what you mean by that interaction of polarized entities and piercing the veil? Answer, I am Ra. We shall state two items of note. The first is the extreme potential for polarization in the relationship of two polarized entities which have embarked upon the service to others path or, in some few cases, the service to self path. Secondly, we would note that effect which we have learned to call the doubling effect. Those of like mind which together seek shall far more surely find. Question 83.17 Questioner, specifically, by what process would, in the first case, two polarized entities attempt to penetrate the veil, whether they be positively or negatively polarized? By what technique would they penetrate the veil? Answer, I am Ra. The penetration of the veil may be seen to begin to have its roots in the gestation of green ray activity, that all compassionate love which demands no return. If this path is followed the higher energy centers shall be activated and crystallized until the adept is born. Within the adept is the potential for dismantling the veil to a greater or lesser extent that all may be seen again as one. The other self is primary catalyst in this particular path to the piercing of the veil, if you would call it that. Question 83.18 Questioner, what was the mechanism of the very first veiling process? I don't know if you can answer that. Would you try to answer that? Answer, I am Ra. The mechanism of the veiling between the conscious and unconscious portions of the mind was a declaration that the mind was complex. This, in turn, caused the body and the spirit to become complex. Question 83.19 Questioner, would you give me an example of a complex activity of the body that we have now and how it was not complex prior to the veil? Answer, I am Ra. Prior to the great experiment the mind, body, spirit was capable of controlling the pressure of blood in the veins, the beating of the organ you call the heart, the intensity of the sensation known to you as pain, and all the functions now understood to be involuntary or unconscious. Question 83.20 Questioner, when the veiling process originally took place, then, it seems that the Logos must have had a list of those functions that would become unconscious and those that would remain consciously controlled. I am assuming that if this occurred there was good reason for these divisions. 
Am I in any way correct on this? Answer, I am Ra. No. Question 83.21. Questioner, would you correct me, please? Answer, I am Ra. There were many experiments whereby various of the functions or distortions of the body complex were veiled and others not. A large number of these experiments resulted in non-viable body complexes or those only marginally viable. For instance, it is not a survival-oriented mechanism for the nerve receptors to blank out unconsciously any distortions towards pain. Question 83.22 Questioner, before the veil the mind could blank out pain. I assume then, that the function of the pain at that time was to signal the body to assume a different configuration so that the source of the pain would leave, and then the pain could be eliminated mentally. Is that correct, and was there another function for the pain prior to the veiling? Answer, I am Ra. Your assumption is correct. The function of pain at that time was as the warning of the fire alarm to those not smelling the smoke. Question 83.23 Questioner, then let's say that an entity at that time burnt its hand due to carelessness. It would immediately remove its hand from the burning object and then, in order to not feel the pain anymore, its mind would cut the pain off until healing had taken place. Is this correct? Answer, I am Ra. This is correct. Question 83.24 Questioner, we would look at this in our present illusion as an elimination of a certain amount of catalyst that would produce an acceleration in our evolution. Is this correct? Answer, I am Ra. The attitude towards pain varies from mind-body-spirit complex to mind-body-spirit complex. Your verbalization of attitude towards the distortion known as pain is one productive of helpful distortions as regards the process of evolution. Question 83.25 Questioner, what I was trying to indicate was that the plan of the Logos unveiling the conscious from the unconscious mind in such a way that pain could not so easily be controlled would have created a system of catalyst that was not previously usable. Is this generally correct? Answer, I am Ra. Yes. Question 83.26 Questioner, in some cases it seems that this use of catalyst is almost in a runaway condition for some entities in that they are experiencing much more pain than they can make good use of as far as catalytic nature would be considered. Could you comment on that? Answer, I am Ra. This shall be the last query of this working of a full length. You may see, in some cases, an entity which, either by pre-incarnative choice or by constant reprogramming while in incarnation, has developed an Israelite program of catalyst. Such an entity is quite desirous of using the catalyst and has determined to its own satisfaction that what you may call the large board needs to be applied to the forehead in order to obtain the attention of the self. In these cases it may indeed seem a great waste of the catalyst of pain and the distortion towards feeling the tragedy of so much pain may be experienced by the other self. However, it is well to hope that the other self is grasping that which it has gone to some trouble to offer itself, that is, the catalyst which it desires to use for the purpose of evolution. May we ask if there are any brief queries at this time? Question 83.27 Questioner, I noticed you started this session with, I communicate now, and you usually use, we communicate now. Is there any significance or difference with respect to that, and then is there anything that we can do to make the instrument more comfortable or to improve the contact? Answer, I am Ra. We am Ra. You may see the grammatical difficulties of your linguistic structure in dealing with the social memory complex. There is no distinction between the first person singular and plural in your language when pertaining to Ra. We offer the following, not to infringe upon your free will, but because this instrument has specifically requested information as to its maintenance of the support group does so at this querying. We may suggest that the instrument has two areas of potential distortion, both of which may be aided in the bodily sense by the ingestion of those things which seem to the instrument to be desirable. We do not suggest any hard and fast rulings of diet although we may suggest the virtue of the liquids. The instrument has an increasing ability to sense that which will aid its bodily complex. It is being aided by affirmations and also by the light which is the food of the density of resting. 
we may ask the support group to monitor the instrument as always so that in the case of the desire for the more complex proteins that which is the least distorted might be offered to the bodily complex which is indeed at this time potentially capable of greatly increased distortion. I am Ra. We thank you, my friends, for your continued conscientiousness in the fulfilling of your manifestation of desire to serve others. You are conscientious. The appurtenances are quite well aligned. I am Ra. I leave you, my friends, in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. Go forth, therefore, rejoicing merrily in the power and in the peace of the one infinite creator. Adonai.